Hello all, my name is Sandeep, uh, working as an associate professor in the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, uh, Vidya Vardhaka College of Engineering, Mysuru. The objective of this video is to choose the uh, intervals, whether it could be for uh, integration or for summation. If it is a continuous time signals, we choose, we decide how to choose the limits of integration and if it is a discrete time signal, we choose what is, uh, we apply summation and what are those limits, okay. Uh, but we will consider the case for uh, continuous time signals first, uh, but the idea or the logic equally holds good for discrete time signals. Now if you see here, I have considered two different signals, two different continuous time signals of different shapes okay uh, first one is a triangular shaped signal whose range of support is from a to b and second one is a rectangular function whose range of support is from c to d what we will assume is that the a b that is the width of a b is much greater than the width of c d okay now uh, here we are trying to apply the convolution what is the, the uh, concept of convolution? Convolution is a combination of three operations. One is shift, the other one is the multiply and the third one is the accumulation. In the sense for continuous time signals we shift, multiply and integrate whereas for the uh, discrete time signals we shift, multiply and add. Okay, so let's see how to choose five different scenarios. Here in our uh, example, we will fix the signal in red, that is the triangular shape function. We fix it and then we try to uh, shift uh, the uh, rectangular function that is one in green. Okay, okay, case one. Case one is that when uh, the CD has started shifting and this is the first scenario. You can see that in this case the signals do not overlap and hence the there is no product so no overlap so first case would be that there is no overlap and hence you need not worry the product is zero and hence uh, the integration is zero in the second case in the second case as the signal moves towards the right the rectangular function moves towards the right this would be the scenario that is when D is greater than A, D is greater than A and but C is less than A. So what would be the typical scenario? If I draw it, this would be the typical scenario. So this is between, this is C, this is D. Now if you choose what would be the limits of integration, the limits of integration will be from a to D. So you have to choose the limits from A to D. Okay. Okay. Now, fine. In the third case, what would be the scenario? That is, in the third scenario, the uh, D is, I'm sorry. D is less than B and uh, C is greater than A. Okay, what would be the scenario would look like? The scenario would look like this. So, this is C and this is D. Okay, so what will be the limits of integration? The limits of integration will be from, from between C to D. So you have to choose the limits from C to D. Okay. What would be the next case? The next case would be again the rectangular function moving towards right. So it is D is okay. Okay. D is greater than uh, B. D is greater than B and the C is less than B. Okay. D is greater than B and C is less than B. So the rectangular function would look like this. So this is C 
and this is d and the limits of integration will be from uh, c to b c to b okay now finally uh, when the again the rectangular function moves towards the right hand side okay so typically that is the case when uh, C is uh, C is greater than B. So how the typical uh, scenario would look like? The rectangular function will be somewhere here. This is C. This is D. Again, you can see that the two signals do not overlap, and hence the product is zero. So no overlap. So again, the fifth scenario is also no overlap okay so there is no overlap okay so the same concept also holds good for uh, the discrete time signals okay so summarizing it so here we have tried to perform our deconvolution integral or two different functions or here we are trying to choose just the uh, limits of integration okay so for continuous time signals we have to integrate and for discrete time signals we have to summate uh, we have to do summation and in this video we have uh, given the logic or the concept behind choosing the limits of integration or the limits of summation okay thank you thank you all